This research methods in psychology video is sampling. When researchers conduct studies and then publish findings, it's tempting to think that the findings apply to all of us. But we need to think carefully about who exactly took part in the study and if the behaviour of those participants can be generalised to everyone. So in this video, we're going to be looking at five sampling techniques, random, systematic, stratified, opportunity and volunteer. And we will, of course, consider the strengths and weaknesses of each. Psychboost.com, over 170 videos to help you with your qualification and Patreon supporters can access bonus resources, tutorial videos and the Discord channel. Our first definition is for the term target population. This is every individual that forms part of the group that you plan to study. So likely it's going to be a very large number. If you're investigating pensioners or four-year-old children or sixth form students, we won't be able to test all of them. We need to take some of them, a sample. What we hope to do then is get our results from that sample and then apply those results back to the target population. This is called generalization. However, members of a population vary in many ways. So ideally we want a sample that is representative of the larger population. Random. So let's start with random sampling. Now it's not just grabbing anyone to take part in your study. It's mathematically random. So everybody in the population has the same chance or probability to be selected as a member of the sample. A researcher first needs a list of all members of the population and then you use a method of selecting them randomly. So putting the names into a hat and drawing them out until they have a full sample or giving each name a number and using a random number generator. The strength of this method is it avoids researcher bias. The researcher can't just choose the people they want in the study which could influence the results. However, because it's random, we could randomly get an unrepresentative sample, maybe not representing all minority groups. If the population size is large, then a random sample can be time consuming. Systematic. Systematic sampling is similar to random. We still need the list of the population, but instead of picking randomly, we go down the list and choose every fifth or 10th or nth person. And you can imagine a teacher picking a sample from her class using the register and calling out every third name. This again removes a chance of researcher bias in picking who they want for their studies. And with a small population studied and lists of the population already existing, such as the register, this can be a quick way of getting a sample. It's unlikely, but still possible to get an unrepresentative sample using a systematic approach. And with large populations, it's difficult to get a full list of members. Opportunity. An opportunity sample is the easiest sample to get and the most commonly used. The researcher simply includes anyone in the sample that they can get their hands on, simply by asking them to take part. For that reason, many psychology studies are actually conducted on university students. A strength of this, of course, is it's a much faster way of getting a sample than any of the other methods. This could save money and allow the researcher to complete the study faster. But there are big problems with opportunity samples. There's a potential for researcher bias. The researcher decides who to ask and who not to ask, potentially manipulating the results. Also, the sample is likely not representative as the researcher only has access to a limited section of the population, in most cases young university students. Volunteer. Another word for volunteer sample is self-selecting sample. This makes clearer the important factor of this sampling method, that the participants select themselves, they volunteer themselves, they're not directly asked. So they might see an advert in the newspaper or online and put themselves forward. So a strength of this is by using an advertisement, especially in a popular newspaper or social network, the researcher can reach a large number of potential participants. And it's relatively easy to collect as after placing the ad, the participants are putting themselves forward. But we do have the issue of volunteer bias. People who volunteer for studies are a certain type of person. They're of course helpful and they have time to take part in psychology studies. But we want to include people who are unhelpful and people who are busy. If we don't, we may not be able to generalise our findings to the wider population. Stratified. A stratified sample is the most complex type of sample, but it tries to avoid some of the problems of the other methods. A stratified sample creates a sample that is representative of the population as a whole. So firstly, the researcher will identify subgroups or strata and their proportion in the wider population. Then the sample is made by randomly selecting participants from within each strata. So they're represented in the same proportion in the final sample. So if 10% of your population were university graduates, 10% of your sample would be university graduates. And the big positive of this approach to sampling is the sample is representative of the large population. 
meaning we can be confident in generalizing what we find to the population. Also, the sampling method avoids researcher bias as it randomly selects participants from within each strata. But the researcher does decide which strata are important to consider, meaning there might be some bias in the selection of strata, and you can imagine stratified sampling is time consuming and difficult. Bonus fact, weird participants. So when considering sampling, we need to consider the implications of bias and generalization. I've already told you what generalization is and about researcher bias and volunteer bias. But going a little deeper, a criticism of psychology studies is that most of them have been completed on weird participants. And by weird, I mean most participants are from a Western, educated, industrial, rich and democratic background. In fact, if you're an American university student, you are 4,000 times more likely to be in a psychology study than a random non-Westerner. And this leads us to consider if much of what we know about psychology actually applies or generalizes around the world. Also, the samples of many historical studies often ignored or underrepresented women, leading us to consider gender bias in much of accepted psychological theory. So that was sampling. I have six tutorial videos covering the 2017, 18 and 19 AS and A-level research method sections. These videos have worked examples to every question and they're full of exam tips. Patrons at the neuron level and above can access these and many, many more hours of exam tutorial videos, as well as over 100 printable resources from across the A-level over on psychboost.com. And I do want to thank all the students and teachers who have supported Psychboost over on Patreon during the development of the Research Methods Unit. It's their support that allows me to teach part-time so I can make Psychboost on YouTube for everyone. So thanks to them and I'll see you all in the next Research Methods video, Experimental Design.